In the first video in this series, I showed you the very basics of getting around Photoshop. At this point, you're probably chomping at the bit to actually start painting things. So this video is going to be all about brushes and erasers. So if you were setting out to find the proper tool to draw with in Photoshop, you'd probably first look at the toolbar. And you'd notice that you've got a brush tool, a pencil tool, further down you've got a pen tool, here's a paint bucket, a variety of things that look like traditional paint tools that you might use if you were a traditional painter. But then you might also be wondering, where's the airbrush tool? Where are the markers? How about fountain pens? The truth is, you'll be using a single tool, which Photoshop calls the brush tool, to be mimicking all of these traditional medium. So let's take a look at some of these brushes in action. Now you'll notice I'm switching between brushes and all I'm doing is opening up this hidden menu and changing the brush head. So to do that, select the brush tool on your toolbar and then right click and a secret menu appears and on that is a list of all of your custom brushes. So you can see there's really quite a range, and the imagination is your only limitation when it comes to these different types of brushes. And yet they're all contained in what Photoshop calls the brush tool. Even if you're doing things that look kind of like a pencil or a pen, it's still all the brush tool. So with all this choice in front of you, you've got everything you'd ever need to paint with, right? Well, I'd suggest you might actually have too much especially for starting out. When it comes to my paintings, about 95% of the time, I'm really only using a few brushes, even though I've got 40 or 50 that I'll use occasionally. Generally speaking, a couple of versatile brushes is really all you need for most of your work. So let me hide these here, and I'll show you the proper three brushes that I like to start with. There's the hard round, the soft round, and this one's a little bit more like an airbrush, and the hard flat. And if you really want these brushes and want to take it a step further, you can go to my site, controlpaint.com, and in the free download section, I provided a file that contains only those three brushes. So what that'll do is it'll override all those default brushes and give you a nice, clean three brushes to work with. Now, of course, you can bring back those defaults at any time, but it's really nice to have only the three to choose from to really keep that palette clean. So in the last video, I introduced you to the idea of navigational keyboard shortcuts. Well, the brush tool, unsurprisingly, has its own handful of incredibly important keyboard shortcuts. So you're going to be using both your navigation and your brush keyboard shortcuts simultaneously to really save a lot of time. So now I'm going to go ahead and go through each of the keyboard shortcuts that the brush tool uses. First off, to change the master diameter, you're going to use the bracket keys, which can be found next to P on your keyboard. To change the color on your brush, if you don't want to open up the color picker window, all you have to do is hold down the Alt key, and it'll change your icon into an eyedropper which will pick up any colors that are already down in your canvas. And this is incredibly useful, and the next video is going to be devoted primarily to this concept. So we'll keep it brief for now. If you want to draw a straight line, you hold down Shift, and it will lock to either a horizontal or a vertical. Now say you wanted to draw a straight line that was on an arbitrary axis. To do that, it's a little more complicated. It's a two-step process. First, you click once to determine the start point, and then you hold down Shift and click a second time to determine the end point. So it's click, Shift, click. And now you'll notice that all the keyboard shortcuts I'm telling you are the PC shortcuts. If you want to find the Mac keyboard shortcuts, there are handy PDFs that Adobe provides on their website.
Now you may wonder how it is that we've gotten so far into a video which is titled both brushes and erasers, and yet I've never mentioned the eraser tool once. Well, there's a reason for that. You see, in Photoshop, the eraser tool is exactly the same as the brush tool, except for one key distinction. Where the brush tool adds pigment to the canvas, the eraser tool removes pigment. Beyond that, they share a lot in common. For example, all the keyboard shortcuts you learned about the brush tool will work with the eraser as well. You also share a brush library between the brush and the eraser. So let me use the eraser tool selected from the tool palette to erase these three squares of blue. I'll begin with the hard round eraser. Now I'll right click and switch to the soft round. And this is maybe more like using um, a kneaded eraser if you're drawing with traditional media. And finally I'll try the hard flat. And this is a little bit more like using a vinyl eraser if you really wanted to carve out a hard edge. When you watch the first video, you know that it ended with a simple worksheet that helped reinforce the concepts that I went over in that lesson. Well, I'm going to do the same thing here, and this time we're going to be working on brush technique. Now, it's going to be important that you use keyboard shortcuts for this, because that's the whole idea of the lesson. So I'll show you the first example using the hard round brush. I'm going to sample from the blue color provided and begin by drawing vertical lines. Each one's going to be increasingly wide. And I'm using the shift key to snap vertically. I'll do the same thing with horizontal lines. Okay, now I'm going to try curves. I'm going to draw from left to right. It'll be light to dark. And I'll do the same thing a little bit thicker. Okay, and finally I'm going to use the click, shift click to draw a rectangle and then cross it in the center. And then I've gone ahead and completed the same worksheet using the other two of the basic three brushes. The soft round and the hard flat. Now you'll probably notice that this is not a pretty worksheet. The goal is not to make a portfolio piece here, but really this is a great way to get used to the idea of using those brushes and relying on the keyboard shortcuts to change their properties.